Hello everyone. I have a lot of thoughts to unload, and I will start with Dark and Darker playtest. I'll start with what is Dark and Darker. As one review, or multiple, I can't remember if it was one or multiple, said, um, Dark and Darker is Tarkov meets Dungeons and Dragons. It's very true. This game is a looter shooter, um, well, mm, looter and extract, I should say, with um, some realistic elements. It's realistic in that the weapon swings or weapon combos matter because it is possible for a weapon to hit your friendly or it's possible that your weapon can get stopped by like a wall instead of hitting the intended target. It's all very possible. Where it is unrealistic is the armor, but that's nitpicking historically. Because uh, in history, you would not damage somebody in full play just by swinging an axe or a sword at them um, if they're in full plate mail. If they're in full plate mail, you're going to have to use a spear or something else to hit the exposed places. If that's not possible, your next best bet is just whacking it with a war hammer or um, some sort of uh, pull arm. There are a few pull arms with a hammer in, specifically for bashing in plate mail and other things. Uh, again, just a nitpick. We're not going to worry about that, but I just wanted you to be aware of where things were realistic and where things were unrealistic. With the basics out of the way, I can now talk about my thoughts on the uh, playtest. I think that the balance is not there. There are just certain combinations or use cases that are just simply way too strong. One example is the fighter. I've seen a level 20 fighter in full plate mail, not even like legendary stuff, but like blue armor, blue plate mail, absorb six backstabs from a rogue. It is truly insane how much um, damage a fighter can absorb. I think that's something that could help a rogue is if maybe they did some sort of perk where you could wear a little bit heavier armor. I would say maybe not quite chainmail, but maybe studded or something like that. Um, the closest analogy I can think of. And in the process of gaining heavier armor, you gain more, um, or I'm sorry, you uh, lose stealth. I'd be perfectly okay with a perk that makes a rogue kind of like a combat rogue to give them more defense, is the analogy I'm going for there. Because then it would at least make it possible to be um, going toe-to-toe -to -toe more often with a fighter. Because in the current state, a fighter can just turn around, at least the higher level ones anyways, and just absolutely ruin a rogue's day. A, a ranger has a far easier time dealing with that. But those are just examples of where I was going with the whole... Um, balance thing. Um, kind of next on my list related to the class is the whole spell system. It is way too easy to dodge a wizard right now. And on the other side of the spell stuff, the cleric, it is really annoying to target with your heals. All it takes is one or two pixels off for that heal to cast on you instead of the intended target. It is super obnoxious at how finicky the targeting is with the cleric. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that there definitely needs to be a lot of work, not just on the balance side of things, but also with how the spells interact, because uh, right now it's just kind of wacky. The next thing on my list is the whole group thing. Unfortunately, there is no group finder in... Dark and Darker at the time of the October playtest. That means unless that you know somebody, you're going to be solo. And that sucks. Because with the way the game is, at the current point, is that it just throws everyone into a match. So if you're a solo player, you get thrown into 
people who are already in a full group. And it sucks being the one bullied by the three groups as a solo player. If the matchmaking system wasn't in place, then they should have made it so that solo players can go against solo players and no group players can join, unless there's some sort of option for that. I understand that there are those higher level people who can do, you know, 1v2s or things like that. So if they want to do that, I'd say make it an option, but by default, everybody should be solo versus solo. I felt that was a very poor imp implementation on that part. Um, oh, and kind of related to gameplay and or balance, shields are just ridiculous right now because there's not a way to really get around them um, in terms of like hitting with a strong attack to knock them off balance or things like that. Meaning somebody could just infinite block and call it a day. If you want to be truly rude, you could run a cleric with a fighter, and that's two shields blocking a hallway. There's very little anyone can do about that. You could try getting a ranger to hit them in the head, but that takes a lot of accuracy. You could do a wizard, but again, easy to dodge. And at that point, they wouldn't even be trying to block anyways, because if they see a wizard, they're just going to dodge you and continue to dodge you until they have a chance to strike you. That's just how things are going to work with that, so... Um, yeah, it's, shields need some sort of, um, redesign or something. It's truly obnoxious. That said, um, those are all my thoughts on that kind of stuff. Now I need to talk about what I think the best group is, so that you can understand what I'm about to say in terms of the future. Right now in the current playtest, I think that... If you're going to go for pure combat, like, you're you're not really going to be looting a whole lot, then I think the best is Fighter, Cleric, Ranger. The reason for that is because, as I mentioned before, the Fighter can take a crap ton of damage and still dish out a ton as well. In addition to that, it's an extremely versatile class. Once you get the perk that lets you equip really anything, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Uh, Cleric is pretty straightforward. It's another shield on top of the fighter if you choose to go twin shields to kind of bully people with the whole shields right now. And then Ranger is well straightforward because a Cleric doesn't get its spells back until it rests at a campfire. It's like Baldur's Gate where you had to rest in order to get the spell charges back. Ranger can set up campfires which allows for that um, recharge to happen. So um, you use the Cleric mostly for revives. I guess you could throw in a few heals or other things, but the main point of keeping a Cleric in that type of group is for the revive. Because that one revive that it gets means a whole lot in a match. And of course you can keep doing it the more campfires you have. So Yeah, um, I would say that that's um, kind of the whole point of that. Now, on the flip side, if you're going full Loot Goblin... You would replace the ranger with a rogue. Because the rogue is um, lockpicking, then it can just unlock all the chests you want. And it would still function kind of similar to ranger, it just would not have the same range capability, but it would still have a very good distant poke. Because you see, that's the whole thing with... Um, the class selection right now is you want classes that either have shorter weapons, so like fighter with a sword and a shield, or possibly a halberd, and then ranger with a spear, because um, halberds and spears are very directional, so it's pretty easy to hit the intended target and not accidentally hit your buddy like a barbarian would, because the barbarian has a very large swing arc, so it's very easy to hit a friend, but because halberd and spears are more directional, that doesn't happen as much. On the other side, a sword, a one-handed sword, has a very small arc, so it's pretty easy to avoid it in general because it's shorter. That's the gist of best classes uh, and setups, in my opinion. Now, let me talk about the future of this so you can kind of see um, where I'm going with all this. I think that if this plans to continue going into the future, I'd really would love to see 
the cleric just get unlimited revives, so we can skip over the whole uh, campfire thing. And I would like to see an alternative class to the cleric, um, because the cleric really isn't that great in combat, um, as far as like some of the other classes. I mean, yes, it can get it done. Um, you know, it is a support class at the end of the day, I guess. So it's if you have somebody taking the aggro for you, it's entirely possible to deal with um, to deal damage over time. But I would like to see maybe like a Knight's Hospitier, for instance, something that's like Halberd specialized, has a revive, and that's it. Because really, if you take away all the heal spells and the protection and stuff like that. The, the revive is the most important thing. So if a Knight's Hospitier just has a revive and halberd proficiency and could do more damage than Cleric and Mealy, that would be awesome. I think that would be a great approach to the future of this game. Um, I would say another thing that would be great too... Um, is maybe add in some sort of repeating crossbow. Because crossbows in their current state is not doing so hot. It just... It's so hard to hit. So it's like the whole wizard problem. And uh, if you miss, it takes quite a while to reload. So a repeating crossbow would be nice. Um... And then maybe just like up the damage of the current crossbow so if it does actually manage to hit. Then at least you're getting something for all that reload time. Um, I would say another thing I would like to see is... Mm, I guess like a short spear. Because right now the long spear is in the game. And... Um, it's very effective in the hands of a ranger with the right perk, but it would be nice to see a shorter spear, so you can do a little bit more poking if you have a shield type of thing. That would be nice to see. Um, maybe even a javelin would be nice, so that there's even more ranged options. I think that would be pretty cool to see. But I guess it would all have to depend on balance. So, who knows where this game is going to go, but that's kind of like my thoughts right now. Um, thanks for listening.